Hi guys, it's uh, ten past one, Saturday afternoon, I'm in the workshop again, clay poles, garage workshop. Uh, I've dropped a bollock with the carbs, not a mega one, but I just wanted to do a quick um, update on the carbs on the 2002 Triumph Bonneville America. I missed a process, it ain't critical. But when I was rebuilding them, um, what I didn't do, one of the steps that I missed off, was when I assembled it, the float bowls there, when I replaced the, uh, the needles, the seat in there, you're supposed to set these, I don't know that. So what I've done is, obviously the carbs have come off the bike again, I've stripped the bike down. Um, and according to the Haynes Bible, the the distance from that surface there, the mating surface, okay, to the top of the bowl is between 16 and 18 millimeters. That's what these have to be set at the height, okay. So they've already been done with a vernier caliper to make sure that there was absolutely cock on, bang on, um, but you can just use uh, a slide square or an engineer square. I've set mine to 17 mil, so it's in the middle between 16 and, 17, uh, 16 and 18. And basically all you do is you just hold it on the flat surface like that and make sure that the float is just clear of it. Right? You do it both sides, like that, right, you obviously, you have your carbs flat on the workbench, so in order to get them flat and level, you have to take your tops off, right, so take your top, when you rebuild your carbs and your tops are off before you put it all together, right, after you've done, you've cleaned your jets, your main jet, and you've put the new needles in, uh, the butterfly chamber needles there once you've put those in just double check it, if you've got vernier calipers just check it with those and just make sure that that is between 16 and 18 millimeters. as I said I've set mine at 17 um, the way that Darren did it in the last video when he calibrated the carbs and he used that clear tube and let it fill up with petrol and then obviously the level of the petrol comes up to that line there. That's fine. I mean, mine were pretty cock on, right? Um, these were probably pff, less than a millimetre out or some daft like that. That might have explained why they were a bit, you know, a, a bit poppy and a bit ropey. The other thing is, is when you put your new needles in, right, in your... Uh, butterfly chamber the needles inside there you know the ones that you turn all the way in and then you back them off so many turns the Haynes Bible says one and a half on the America right um, when dad set it he looked at the wrong one it's easy to miss because of the way it's laid out uh, in the book but it is one and a half turns out so when you put new needles in put them all the way, these are the needles with the spring, the metal washer and the little rubber ring, the sealing ring, once you put those in, all the way down till you feel them bottom out and then obviously mark your screwdriver and give them one and a half turns out and that should settle and that's according to the manual, that's what they have to be. Alright, so my fault, I should have read the bloody, you know, I should have read the book and I dropped a bollock, but obviously I don't want you guys going out, stripping your carbs, rebuilding them, and I'm giving you misinformation. All right. So if you've got anybody who you know who's seen the other videos, and I'm going to be doing the carbs, just make sure they look at this one as well, this video. Okay. Um, so that's that. So these I'm set. These I'm ready to go back on the bike now. But while I've got the bike in bits. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the front and rear 
mud guards um, for two reasons. One, because I want to dry fit the new tins that I've got for the military theme bike, for the Help for Heroes bike. I want to just check that they they fit. So I'll do a little video on that just to show you guys, you know, the process of taking them out, putting them back on. This, you know, like so. I ain't, I ain't going to tell you how to suck eggs. It's it's you know pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah, you know, just to show you what what tools you need and what sizes and this, that, and the other. So I'm going to get them off. Um, but while my tins are off, I'm going to clean them because I'm absolutely caked with mud. Right. Um, obviously, went out for a ride uh, last week and went through some bad roads, you know, with the mud and the crap and everything. So we've got quarries up the road, so you just pick it up. I just want to take them off and just give them a clean. But while I've got them off, once I'm cleaned and dried, I've got some um, stone chip spray. So I'm going to put that on the underneath of both fenders um, just to protect them. Um, but also, now I've got access to the airbox because I've took the carbs off and I've took the two bolts to hold the airbox uh, in place. So that, that's moving about. I'm, I'm going to take the airbox um, not not take it out but I've got better access to it to clean it because that's all caked up with shit and everything as well so um, that's the jobs for today so I'm going to get the carbs rebuilt get them put back on the bike um, and then then I'll do another video on the, on the tins and then what I'll do is once once the carbs are back on and I'll fire it up I've, Daz has lent me his, um, his vacuum gauge so I can do my own test just to make sure that they're balanced properly. They should be. I mean, now that they've been rebuilt, I mean, Daz, Daz come round the other day and, um, well, it was about half past nine, quarter ten the other night on his way to work because um, he was going to take the carbs away and do them at home but he come round, he had a half hour and uh, he just gave him uh, another good clean um, before we put them back together so I've just got to put the pots back on now and then reassemble it so I'll get that done and then I'll I'll do um, another video showing you uh, the rear fender and the, the sissy bar and the queen seat and all that um, just how to strip all that off obviously you've got your indicator uh, cluster on there and your rear brake lights so we'll be obviously we're gonna have to disconnect them to get them off so I'll show you how to do them uh, with your wiring loom underneath um, so I'm gonna crack on with this then all right then, guys, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll catch you in a bit. See you later. Bye. Okay, guys, she's all put back together now. So the carbs are in. Everything's buttoned up. She's still dirty. I was going to take her outside and give her a wash, but it's belting it down outside. I don't mind the boy getting wet. Well, I mean. I don't mind me getting wet, but you know, I don't want to get the boat too bloody wet, even though I am washing it. So uh, I'm going to knock it on the head. I ain't going to wash it today, I'll probably do it tomorrow if it's dry. Right, so everything's put back together, the carbs are in, um, fil uh, the, the air filter box, that's all tightened back down. I've put the seat on, put the covers on, and everything. So, should we fire it up and see, Sh see how she sounds? Right, now obviously, bear in mind. Um, I adjusted the floats, them are set, the needles are set, so the floats are set at 17mm, the jets are set at one and a half turns, not two and a half, which we thought they were. Um, we ain't touched anything else other than to give it a clean and put it all back together, so we'll fire it up and see what she sounds like. How done to your, how done to your hats.
exhausting. There you go, that's it then. So that's the carbs rebuilt and cleaned and everything. Um, I was going to swap the tins out and just do a dry fit today. Um, but it means disconnecting all the wiring loom for the rear lights and the, uh, the indicators and everything. And damn, uh, it's all hardwired, there's no bullet connectors so I can't pull them apart. So one of the jobs I'll be doing soon is in order for me to put the, the Help for Heroes military themed uh, tins on and swap them out. I'll break into the wiring loom and I'll put some bullet connectors on all the connections. Um, so when I do swap it out, I'm ju it's just a case of pulling them apart, swap it over, push them back together and then, you know, it's a 20 minute job to swap all the tins over. Um, what I'm going to do now, um, it's a basically teach you how to suck eggs <laughs> video. Right, in the nicest way. What I'm going to do, because obviously there's a lot of guys out there who've got these bikes and they're not sure of, you know, uh, what size nut, uh, what size sockets and this, that, and the other. So I'm going to get some masking tape and I'm going to mask up individual log like, critical bolts on the bike and I'm going to write on the torque setting for them. Okay. So for example, where your um, where your springs are here, right? I'm I'm going to do that one. So I'll show you the torque settings on those. Um, if you haven't already got one, get a torque wrench. I'm brilliant. Saves all the uh, saves all the guesswork. You know, doing stuff fully tight. If you've got a torque torque wrench, you can just go like that, gear to click, and it's done. So it's only for information. I know a lot of you guys will, you know, probably turn to your Ains manual or whatever. You um, but I'll, I'll just go down one side of the bike, type stuff up and just put the torque settings on um, and the size of the the spanners and stuff that, that you'll need to, to do each of these jobs you know if you've got to take things off or swap things out so I'll do that now, I'll get, all, get it all labelled up and then I'll do another video in a few minutes and just show you that but uh, I'm chuffed with the bike She's running beautifully, she sounds great, absolutely brilliant. It's got rid of all that pop and everything. So it's it, it's amazing just how how much you know a millimetre of float adjustment affects the running of your bike. Um this is only done eight thousand eight hundred and sixteen miles from new to two thousand and two. So um yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Okay, so I'll get set up and then I'll, I'll come back and I'll do this other video for you. Alright guys, see you in a minute. 